Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and finally to a new episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. For those of you that are new to my channel and do not know this car, I will put a link for you up here to catch up on the series. In the previous episode, we took off all of the belts. So that's the cam belt, the balance shaft belts, the alternator belt and the power steering belt. All of that's now off the car. So um, what I could do now is start building up the system again, but I actually want to uh, go a little bit further into this engine. I want to remove this uh, cam cover. And the reason for that is because I want to change the guide plates for the Vario cam chain so that I know that that's fresh. So I'm quickly going to get this car onto the quick jacks and uh, you guys just sit back, relax, and let's start working. Right, so before we start stripping the car, I just wanted to take you through what I've done off camera. Um, down there, you can see all the plastics has been restored. But up here, you can see all of the uh, pulleys and things have also been restored. So this has been repainted, cleaned up. This has been cleaned up. There was no rust on this. This guy was very rusty. I cleaned it up. It looks good. This is new. This is cleaned. The roller here has already been replaced on this arm. The arm has been cleaned. And these sprockets have also been cleaned and de-rusted they were rusty on all sides and they are looking really really good now and the same goes for these guide plates they have been cleaned they didn't have any real rust on them so a little bit of mis uh, steel wool uh, cleaned all of that up and it's been looking good for the past couple of months so i'm not too worried that that'll rust or go bad or whatever on the car so that's all good so um, what I'm using to help me guide this work on the camshafts is a write-up that I found on Rendus. This is very complete and I couldn't really find a very good help in the factory manual. It's all over the manual, so I have to like link 15 stories together. Whereas this is one nicely written thing with photos. So I'm currently on step 24 of 54 steps for this. Um, so we're about halfway. Um, a lot of the stuff you need to do in any case to do the belt service, which is why I'm doing this now. So the next thing we have to do is we have to pull off the cam sprocket. I'm going to get these leads off and then I'm going to get the uh, cam cover off. And I also need to get those two fuel lines off. And then I should be able to get to the cam underneath all of this stuff. <music> So we've made it all the way from step 24 up to step 30. So we have the cam pulley off. I've got the Woodruff key out. I've cleaned a little bit here because it was really bad. Um, I've got the ignition wires out. I've got the fuel lines out. I've got the hall effect sender out. And true to form, it broke. So I will be ordering a new effect sender 
and I also already have two new fuel lines lying on the shelf because these tend to perish. These actually look really good, so maybe the previous owner replaced them a while ago. But uh, to be sure, I'm going to replace them anyway. So the next thing for me to do is now start actually taking apart the uh, cam cover and then we will see what's lurking behind it. All right, I've got all 13 the bolts out of the cam cover and I have put them into a cardboard here. And the reason I did that is because they are not all the same length. And this is the easiest way to keep track of them. Otherwise I have to remember which one was short and which one was long. So now it has the cam pulley here, the uh, inlet there, and they're all in sequence as I took them off the cam cover. So the next thing for me to do now is to just pull this cam cover off and let's see what we find underneath it. This car is in exceptional condition. I know I've said this before, but if you guys get to, if you guys can see past the dirt, the quality of this engine is just phenomenal. Even these um, are still nice and pliable. They're not hard, they're not plasticky. So the previous owner really looked after this car. Yeah, so if we look at these cams, they look really, really nice and shiny. I'm not seeing any mayonnaise in this engine. It's looking good, which means there was no water in this block as we suspected. So it's looking really great. There's some dirt here that I need to quickly clean off. And there's also some dirt over here that I need to clean off. But other than that, she's looking good. And we can move on to the next step. Sorry guys, I forgot to film. I'm actually now busy with the next step. And that's to remove the banjo bolt that sits there and the two little Allen head bolts that sit here that holds this oil feeder tube for the Vario cam onto the uh, oil line. So um, I just have this one last bolt to remove. Once this is done, I can pull this uh, line out of the car and then we can start removing the camshaft. This is extremely stressful because these bolts all feel like they'll strip. But so far so good. So the bolt on the right hand side is shorter than the one on the left hand side. Alrighty, now I should be able to get this oil tube out of here. Yes, and one last ring. Ooh, alrighty, I didn't drop anything into the engine, very good. All right, so now that I've got the pipe removed, I need to come onto this side of the Varia cam and I need to uh, get the check valve out. All right, I've got all the bolts out of the Vario cam tensioner. So I think the next step for me to do now is to start removing all of these bolts on the camshaft. And then we should be able to pull the camshaft out of the car. Oh. So that's the cams out of the car. Um, I've got the caps in order for as I, as I took them off. In essence, it's not necessary because they are all numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I need to do now is I need to compress this Vario cam mechanism ever so slightly so that I can slide it out in between these cams. Um, and the reason for that is because I need to replace these little guide plates. I'll show you once I've got it out what it looks like. They are not too badly worn, so um, they probably could have survived a much longer time. But uh, like I said, I've got the new plates, so they're going to go in. So now that I've got this whole thing exploded on my workbench, I can show you a little bit more about it. So um, this is the Vario cam tensioner and you can see that the bottom glide plate is basically fixed in position and the stop one can move up and down and by moving up and down, it can change the cam timing. 
then these are the glide plates that comes out of the car and like i said this car is in really good condition and you can see that these glide plates are barely worn they are very badly discolored already but they are not worn i mean this is not even a millimeters worth of wear and the same goes for the other side so um like i said i'm replacing them anyway so they are going in the bin and these are my new guide plates these are going on the other thing i just want to show you is that the diy and even the porsche manual shows a little peak on the cams for top dead center so i just have this little flat square that sits out here this is the exhaust and this is the inlet and it's the same thing on both sides and it was supposed to align perfectly to a tooth, which I guess it sort of kind of does. So um, anyway, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in that I'll get this timing 100% correct. So I'll have to go and borrow some tooling to make sure I can get this timing perfect. But uh, for now, let's just assemble the glide plates, get this thing compressed and install this special tool from porsche so that it keeps it compressed so that you can easily slide it in between the cams so as you assemble there's a lip on the one side and not on the other side and that's the way you slide them over so with a lip on the outside and the part number on the outside just slip it over it's really not very difficult what i have to say is that these guys they are sitting a bit tighter than this one, which is actually quite nice because those were feeling quite loose. So that's the guide plates installed. And now I will reinstall these two posts. And then we can compress it and get it back in there. So this is the new cam chain that I've bought for the car. This is the old cam chain. So let's just quickly line them next to one another, make sure they are the same, which they are. And uh, they are also the same brand. It's got a little M, I think, stamped into it. Looks like an M or maybe it's a crown. But uh, And it has, this one has blue links in the same spot. Let's just double check that as well. So this one has blue links. This one has copper links. So... Um, yeah, this is perfect. This guy is going into the car. So um, now we start reassembling. A lot of boring math later. So as I mentioned earlier in this video already, my cams are a little peculiar because the inlet and the exhaust cam both do not have the markings that I expect from factory. So it's got these little flat areas here, which sort of kind of tells me where top dead center is. But I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a little mark on this camshaft that I didn't make that was on here before, um, which doesn't 100% line up with this. So it tells me a prior mechanic or even maybe the factory uh, marked this cam stop dead center by hand. Um, which means I'm not trusting anything now. I know this en engine ran before I got it, but this doesn't line up and I want things to work. But what I'm looking for, I'll superimpose that picture, is a little pointy piece on the cam that should be somewhere here. That tells me where top dead center is. And you can see even the Porsche manual tells me that there should be a pointy bit which i do not have on this cam but obviously they knew this was a problem because i'm assuming they got multiple manufacturers and they say if you don't have these notches then there's a tool so i cut out that tool into paper and now it's in cardboard so this goes onto the exhaust this goes into the inlet of cylinder one and that'll allow me to check whether I have my timing correct on my cam. All right, so I've got my little cardboard template. You probably should make this out of aluminium, but I don't have time and I don't have aluminium and I don't think I need it. So um, basically what I need to do, this is the inlet. 
uh, that's the exhaust. This is the exhaust cam where the cam sprocket sits on. This is the inlet cam. I've spread them as far as I can on the chain on the bottom. And basically what should happen is that this should slot fairly well into the tool when you have it all tensioned up. And I do. So I think I'm happy that this is the way it should be done. All right, so I am now more at ease that I've got the timing correct on this thing and that it was correct in the car. Uh, it just, uh, you can't rely on the marks apparently, which is fine. So we are now going to put in the Varia cam mechanism and once that's all done, we can start putting things back into the car. Right, you probably saw me struggling getting this in between the chains and I wasn't understanding why this isn't sufficiently compressed. Um, and then I went and looked at a whole bunch of more photos and I figured out that I made a little bit of a mistake. And that is that I installed this uh, guide plate the wrong way around. So you'll see it's got holes on the one side and the other side it doesn't. And the top guide plate should have the holes pointing away from the solenoid and the bottom guide plate should have them pointing towards the solenoid. So that was a mistake I made. Uh, this will hopefully now make it more reliable to get this little tool in there. And then I should be able to get the tensioner in between these chains. With the Vario cam mechanism now in between the cams, I can move on to the next step, which is number 47. And basically what it's telling me to do is to lube up all of the areas where I'm going to have friction. So it's all of these spots on the cams here. It's these guys and also these valleys needs to be lubed up again. And I'm also just going to clean off this mating service so that my new seal has the best chance of keeping the engine dry. So with the cam in its spot, the next thing for me to do is to install all of these caps, all eight of them, and I'll tighten them all very evenly as I go along to make sure that the cam settles nicely into its spot. The camshaft is now back in its position with all of the cam caps tightened down. Um, it's not torqued yet, but they are all sitting flush to the head. And the next thing I need to do is to install this final double uh, cam cap. Uh, but before we do that, I need to uh, put a sealant on this area, which is Loctite 574, to make sure we don't leak because all of this here will have a rubber seal around it, but this here is metal on metal and we don't want any oil leaking through the front of the engine in this area. So let's quickly get that done and then we um, can put the cap on. That should do it. And now we torque the bolts down to 20 newton meters, starting from the inside, going outside. All right, next job is to install the cam seal. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on the cam itself. I don't have this Porsche special tool for this job, so it's gonna have to be done 
in a bit of a pragmatic manner. So that's the new seal. Pop it on there and get it in there. There we go. Before we reinstall the oil feed tube, I need to replace this O-ring on the actuator. So let me just get in there and pull it out. There we go. And let's put in a new one. I think that's in. Good stuff. I'm going to pull this uh, tool now. Right, tools out, check valve. That's in. And now I have to get this little aluminium ring onto the oil feed hole and not lose it. It's gonna be very tight. Good. And we bring the oil feed tube in. That's looking good. Don't lose it. Now the banjo bolt for the oil feed tube. And since it doesn't really matter, I guess if it leaks a little bit, because it's just going to leak inside the oil. But I still want it to be done correctly. The short bolt goes on the right. And the long bolt goes on the left hand side. All right, and now we tighten it to 10 Newton meters. All right, so that's the service on the cam now completed. As you can see, my timing marks looks really, really good. And even if I go and put my little makeshift tool that I got from the Porsche workshop manual into its spot, you can see she's perfectly timed. The only thing I have left to do is to put the cam cover back on and to connect these few lines. But I'm not going to do that now because I need to rotate this a couple of times, make 100% certain I did this right. And for me to be able to rotate it, obviously I need a lot more things going on over here. But all of this will happen in the next episode. So for now, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.